Mr. MBT, is it? Uh, hello, my name is Alex Simo with 10 O's. Uh, no relation to the doctor or the YouTuber. It says here in your case file I'm assigned as your speech attorney. Shouldn't that be speech therapist? No, we are far beyond therapy. What you're doing to the English language is a crime. Now, I need you to say the name of the Xyz monster that searches a winged beast. Oh, you're talking about Lyralisk Recital Starling. No, no, I... That is... That's, that is why you're on trial. Okay, let's try this. If you go to a theater to hear someone read out Hamlet, you are at a play? No, no, um, how about this? If you go to your daughter's ballet, you are... Wrong building, I don't have a daughter. Ah, oh boy. Okay, um, I am not supposed to represent clients I believe are guilty, but we will make an exception. <sighs> if you go to see a piano performance, you are at a piano- Oh! You mean a recital! Goodbye. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. As you know, I have taken it upon myself to wage a jihad against boring Yu-Gi-Oh deck names, so you can imagine my delight when it turned out that Bird Up stuck as the name for Tri-Brigade Lyralisk. Then, imagine my pain, my dismay, when it became clear the best version of the deck wasn't playing any birds at all. But worry not. I believe there is a future for shitty puns in Top Cut Breakdowns, because Lyralisk just might be playable. That's right, the birds are rising up. Burn up, burn up! So here's the list, which comes courtesy of Battlestorm's top four finish at the most recent Chalice Line Monthly. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the pack opening website that everyone is using for their progression series, but it now also supports Chaos Draft. You might have also missed it's got a deck builder, a card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. I personally use it to post the Chalice Slime monthly deck breakdowns like the one you see in front of you. Now let's leap into Lyralisk. Lyralisk is a series of... bird... cosplayers? I'm a little fuzzy as to whether these are actual birds with, like, wings and hollow bones and an affinity for chirping outside my window and ruining my takes, or if they're anime girls cosplaying as actual birds. Whichever the case, I dislike them. They're exceptionally easy to summon, and each one pluses you afterwards. Next, they're often overlaid into their tribal and non-hard once-per-turn Xyz monster, Recital Starling, which adds additional wing beasts from your deck to your hand. It's not hard to see how a single bird in the hand can quickly become a few on the board, and eventually a whole flock. Unfortunately, birds of a feather tend to lose together. Lyralisks are an incredible advantage engine, but as Flower Cardians have taught us, advantage for advantage's sake is useless. At some point, you've got to actually win the game. There's a reason that the core Lyralisks have been legal for years and their most effective use until now is a bunch of dead monsters that Fractal can banish. Enter the new Lyralisks, Barrel Canary, Celeste Wagtail, Prom Thrush, and Ensemble Robin. These cards do everything for the archetype. They search powerful spells and traps, they give it something to work towards in the form of a first turn boss monster, and they enable extremely powerful plays through individual pieces of interaction. Add to that the recently released UFD, and you've got a recipe for a playable deck. But that's just on the play. On the draw, it's even better. This deck can make Zeus easier and more effectively than pretty much anything else, and play through just about anything while doing it. Many of the Lyralisk monsters imbue the Xyz monster that uses them as material with an effect. Some prevent them from being targeted, some prevent control from switching, but each one removes a possible out from the equation of answers. Ultimately, you can go for either an OTK with Assembled Nightingale, which these days doesn't even need an equip spell, or you can go for a 5 activation Zeus, which regardless of your feelings on the card, you have to admit, is just a little bit funny. 
So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, the old Lyralisks. Lyralisk Turquoise Warbler is the only one with a very large head. Something must have happened to her. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if this card is special summoned from the hand, you can special a Lyralisk monster from your hand or graveyard. Now, thankfully, those are two independent effects, because the first condition, controlling no monsters, is very hard to fulfill, but the second one, special summoning it, is not. After that is Lyralisk Cobalt Sparrow. If this is special, you can add a level 1 winged beast type monster from your deck to your hand, and a Wind Xyz monster summoned using this card on the field gains the effect that your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Now that persists like all of the imbued effects does after you detach the Cobalt Sparrow. So if you have one Cobalt in rotation, you can potentially get all of your recitals under targeting protection. Next up is two Lyralisk Sapphire Swallow. If you control a winged beast type monster, you can special summon this card from your hand and one level one winged beast type monster as well. And an Xyz monster that was summoned using this card on the field can attach a Lyralisk monster in the graveyard to the Xyz monster as material on summon. Next up is the first new one, Lyralisk Barrel Canary. This is a rebuild tool and helps you extend plays first turn. If this card's in your hand, you can target a Lyralisk in your graveyard, special summon this card and that card, and you can't special summon anything for the rest of the turn, except for Xyz monsters. Using this at the end of your play is fantastic, and a wind monster that was Xyz summoned using this card on the field as material gains the effect that it gains 200 attack, and possession of it cannot switch. It is an out to triple tactics talents. Next up is Celeste Wagtail. If it's special summoned, you can add a Lyralisk spell trap from your deck to your hand, and if it's in your graveyard, you can attach it to a Lyralisk Xyz you control. Finally, we've got one Jester Confit. It's just generally good to have in rotation a free special summon that can be searched off of stuff like Where Arf Thou, and a DD Crow. If you open everything, you can search DD Crow with a recital and have some more interruption on your opponent's turn. Next up are the spells. Three Leerlisk Bird Call. This is maybe the most pushed spell I've ever seen in my entire life. Add to your hand, or... Send to the graveyard one Leerlisk monster from your deck, then you can special summon a Leerlisk monster with a different name from your hand. Now, there's a hard ones per turn on that, but it turns out that a modular Rota or Foolish Burial is pretty darn good. After that, we've got one copy of Leerlisk Bird Sanctuary. This allows you to target two winged beast Xyz monsters you control, attach one of them and all materials attached to it to the other as material. Great way to get OTKs in with Assembled Nightingale. If you control an Xyz with three or more materials, which you always will on the first turn because of UFD, you can also draw a card for free. After that, we've got three Where Arf Thou, just a great way to get more Lyralisks into your hand. Think of it as the cyber emergency of the deck. One Monster Reborn, one one for one and one instant fusion, just good to have general single use uh, extension ability. Three copies of Pot of Prosperity. You do kind of want to see multiples of the Lyralisks, and unfortunately there just aren't enough to ensure that you see two names every game without finding a bird call. And three Mystic Mine. I'm sorry. I know you don't want to see Mystic Mine, but it's so good in this deck. You slap down the Mystic Mine on an established board from your opponent and OTK with an assembled Nightingale like nobody's business. Finally, we've got one called by the Grave and three Cross Out Designator, targets for which are Nibiru, Ash Blossom, Droll and Lockbird, Effect Veiler, and Infinite Impermanence. In the extra, we've got one independent Nightingale. It burns and wins you in time, but you're only ever summoning it off Instant Fusion, so... No, it doesn't. More importantly, it's a level 1 monster that you can overlay. We've got two Zeus and a Downard. We've got Utopic Future Dragon and Utopia Future. Incredibly easy to make this card with our three Recital Starling. One copy of Prom Thrush, new card for the archetype and not represented on the YGO Pro deck uh, upload of this deck just because it was recently changed in Edo Pro. Great way to bounce spell traps your opponent controls before you go for anything particularly devastating. Double Assembled Nightingale, this card is just fantastic. One Ensemble Blue Robin, a really powerful boss to end on turn one. It gains 500 for every material attached to it, and if your opponent special summons a monster, you can detach a material, then target one of those monsters and return it to the hand. Then if it's sent to the graveyard by your opponent, you can target a Lyralisk in your grave and add it to your hand for extension next turn. You are protecting this via it having a lot of attack, but also your opponent will have to commit to a special summon in order to get over the Linkaribo that is part of your end boards. This is very easy to make, you don't really ever use your normal summon, and so spending it on this bad boy is extremely good. Because we have so many level 1s, we're also playing one Relinquished Anima. So, with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Elemental Hero, and this game showcases the subtle power of the end board this deck is capable of producing going first. We're going to begin with a copy of Pot of Prosperity, and given the outcome of this Pot of Prosperity, the follow-up Ash, and the Called by the Grave, I'm going to elect to build a board that does not include Linkaribo. This is because 
Given what we've revealed, I think the Ensemble Blue Robin is probably going to be too big for it to matter. We're going to go for a Turquoise Warbler and a Cobalt Sparrow, triggering the Sparrow for a copy of Celeste Wagtail, before we go for a Recital Starling. We'll activate both effects and then search from our deck door hand a copy of Sapphire Swallow, which we'll then activate. We'll summon it and the Wagtail, then trigger the Wagtail effect in order to add a copy of Bird Call to hand. We'll overlay for a Recital Starling, activate both effects again. This time we're going to search from our deck door hand another copy of Cobalt Sparrow. From here we're going to go into UFD so we no longer have to worry about monster effects. And we'll fire off this bird call for a Cobalt Sparrow, then activate the Barrel Canary that we added. We'll go ahead and special summon back this Sapphire Swallow and make a 3 mat Ensemble Blue. We'll trigger the effect of the Ensemble Blue to attach and the effect of the Celeste Wagtail and Graveyard to attach again for a 2700 attack 5 bounce monster. Our opponent's going to begin with a Stratos, and unfortunately, they're playing one of the very few decks that can normal summon a monster that can out this, but not through a UFD. They'll pass back to us, and unfortunately, with so few cards in the extra deck, we can't really afford a Pot of Prosperity. We'll just get in, normal summon a Jester Confit so we can make the Link Rebo and pass back to our opponent. They draw for turn a copy of Ash. They're going to normal summon the Shadow Mist, then Mask Change It. That's going to add from their deck to their hand a copy of Ferris, but unfortunately for them, we can use Ensemble Blue Robin in order to return this Dark Law back to their extra deck. They'll go for the Ferris effect, we'll negate with UFD, they'll activate Malicious, and then we'll activate the Ensemble Blue to put that bad boy back in the hand. From here, they will pass turn and just a hop, skip, and a jump to the battle phase to do lethal damage after a little bit of styling. Our second match is up against Cyber Dragon and really shows off what this deck can do on the draw. Our opponent's going first. They're going to begin with a copy of Pot of Prosperity, finding off the top. Okay, the Hertz is fine. They're going to normal summon this copy of Cyber Dragon Core and add from deck to hand. Oh, all right. Cyber Dark World. That's going to get a Chimera. Chimera is going to be summoned. They'll activate the effect of Chimera, pitching one of these infips for a power bond. They're going to power bond their entire hand away for a Rampage. Then they'll trigger the Rampage and activate the effect of the Hertz in Graveyard to add a card from deck to hand. From here, they can send two to the Graveyard, including a Stardust Synchron to make Shen Shen. Okay, that's a little cool. Thankfully, we have Mystic Mind, so, you know, that's that. Now, this deck can actually OTK with a Mystic Mind up, so we're going to try and do that. We're going to overlay for a copy of Recital Starling, then afterwards we'll activate the effect of Recital Starling, and... Ah, dang it. Okay, that probably stops the OTK, but it's not going to stop a ton of damage coming our opponent's way. And then afterwards, a huge Zeus. We'll activate the effect of Assembled, we'll activate Bird Sanctuary, trigger Bird Sanctuary to draw a card, then trigger it again to equip all of that Recital Starling under the Assembled Nightingale. This is going to give us a 1,000 attack point Assembled Nightingale that can attack five times, which is unfortunately not lethal. In main phase two, we'll go into Downard and put a five mat Zeus on the field before passing back to our opponent. They draw Chalice, that's insane. They're going to Tribute Summon a Cyber Dragon, and unfortunately, because of the existence of Mega Fleet, we are going to have to stop that. Uh, they'll go for the Forbidden Chalice in response, we will chain Zeus, they'll bring out another Cyber Dragon, and there's the boy. We couldn't have even played around this by making it in a main monster zone, because guess what? Zeus is a machine. Okay, we draw for turn, and fine. Sure, we'll play this game. I, whatever. They draw Hertz and pass back to us. We draw for turn, it's an Ash Blossom, we'll pass back to them. They draw for turn, it's a, a Cyber Emergency, which would be very good if we didn't draw the Ash uh, afterwards, they're going to pass back to us. We're going to draw a Turquoise Warbler, and that should be all she wrote. We'll special the Turquoise Warbler, and you then use the effect to bring the Sapphire Swallow back, go into Assembled Nightingale, attach this copy of Celeste Wagtail, proceed to the battle phase, and deal lethal damage. So, it's time for game three, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. No more Drytron. No more Virtual World. From here on out, we're playing Bodex. Presenting Flundry's Nuts. Or... Fluanderies, whatever Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG has named this, so we can't make the epic haha -ha Reddit joke. We're going first, let me show you what we can do with a hand this good. We'll go for the Turquoise Warbler and then summon a Cobalt Sparrow. We'll trigger that effect in order to get a Sapphire Swallow to hand, then go for a Recital Starling. We'll activate Recital's effect, targeting itself, then activate its second effect in order to add a Celeste Wagtail to hand. I'm getting greedy here. I'm going to go for the Link Revo before firing off a Bird Call, and we'll get a Barrel Canary, which we will then activate afterwards. We're going to bring back the Wagtail, trigger the effect in order to get the Draw Spell, and then we'll go into another Recital Starling. Now, this is really, really not a good idea. We add a DD Crow here, and we have to draw an extender or we won't have Ensemble Blue. But we do, so who cares? We'll go into an Ensemble Blue Robin and then activate the effect to attach a Cobalt Sparrow. Then we'll activate the Graveyard Effect of the Celeste Wagtail to attach an additional card. And we are off to the races. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Harpy's Feather Duster. And we'll chain Cross Out Designator calling Imperm. I really don't want to lose to that card specifically. They'll go for a Dimension Shifter. Who cares? We'll UFD this copy of Robina. And then we're taking it. Our opponent sets two and pass. Now, no reason to extend into a possible Torrential Tribute. So we'll just go to the battle phase. They'll flip up a Macro Cosmos. Very funny. And then we will pass back to them in pretty much the exact same position they were last turn. We'll set one additional card, they'll draw, and then concede. So it's time for game two, and ooh, ugh. 
Well, what a time to let you know this is the inaugural episode where we'll actually be siding. Ideally, we don't want to see two Lava Golem and one Barrel Canary, but you get the picture. Our opponents going first are going to begin with a copy of Fluanderese and the Mysterious Map. They'll normal summon a copy of Rabina, trigger the banished effect of Eaglin to Chain Block, and then go ahead and normal summon the Eaglin afterwards. We'll infip here in order to get two monsters on their side of the field, but then they normal summon an M-Pen anyway. Uh, must have just drawn it, I suppose. They're going to get a City of Dreams, normal summon a Toucan, trigger the effect of the Toucan, and then set one and pass. Fantastic. From here, we will make a Lava Golem, and we really don't have anything else to do. We'll try to end main phase. They're going to go for City of Dreams. They'll trigger the effect of the Eaglin and add the toucan back to hand, normal summon the Robina. We will droll and lock in a chain so they can't resolve it, give them another Lava Golem, set one, and because we have no starters, let's just go to game three. So it's time for that all-important game three, and ooh, this is going to be a weird one. They've opened Dimension Shifter, which is their high roll hand trap, but outside of that, their hand is very reliant on the field spell. Our hand is almost entirely hand traps, but we do have the necessary cards to go off. Let me think what we're going to do here. We'll proceed to the main phase and activate Bird Call. Our opponent's going to fire a Dimension Shifter. We'll take a Turquoise Warbler, Neglect to Summon, Set 2, and Pass. They're going to go for the Fluanderese in the Mysterious Map. We will Cosmic Cyclone in response. That's why it's in the board for this interaction specifically. They'll go for Toucan, targeting that card. We will Infip. They will Book of Moon here. Oh, God. So they are going to get the map, but they don't have another monster, and they've already activated the effect this turn. They'll Set 2 and Pass, and we should be fine from here. We're going to go for Warbler and Special Summon a copy of Wagtail. We'll trigger Wagtail to get a copy of Bird Call before going into a Recital Starling. We're going to increase the attack and defense, and it eats a book as well. Okay, still no big deal. We'll go for Bird Call. We're going to add a copy of Cobalt Spare to hand. Then we are going to Instant Fusion out a copy of Independent Nightingale. We'll burn them for just a little bit of damage. Then Normal Summon the Cobalt Sparrow to go into a Recital Starling. We'll increase the attack and defense and activate the effect in order to add from deck to hand a copy of Barrel Canary, which we will then activate. We are going to go ahead and Special Summon back this Cobalt Sparrow, which has not activated its effect yet, so we can get a copy of Sapphire Swallow. Then use Recital Starling to add another winged beast from our deck to our hand. Finally, we'll go for the Sapphire Swallow, special summoning the Cobalt Sparrow, and then overlay for a copy of Prom Thrush. We're going to attach from Graveyard, then spin that Fluanderese map so that we don't have to worry about it later. From here, we can go into UFD, proceed to the battle phase, attack in, and then in main phase two, we can make a huge Zeus. I am pretty sure there is nothing our opponent can do from this position. They'll draw for turn. It's an eagle. That's not a bad one, but unfortunately for them, negating the chain blocked effect of Toucan is just as good as negating the Eaglin here. They'll concede and we walk with it. So we're back with the deck and wow, this is a, uh, this is really good. I mean, I expected it to be fine. And maybe it's a best of three versus a deck that's mostly cope from stun players, but this looked really playable. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's consistent. It helps that every single card is basically every other single card, and like Drytron, all you really need to pop off is any two differently named monsters. Two, it's a combo deck, yes, but unlike most YouTube combo strategies, it has vastly different lines based on if you're going first or second. Uh, most of these decks try to usually just jam the going first board, going second. This one pivots its game plan entirely. And three, its first turn board is deceptively powerful. There are almost no decks that can play through, like, six compulses. And it doesn't help that the offending monster is immune to targeting and triple tack. And the cons. One, its first turn setup isn't very malleable. Ensemble Blue is mostly all you have going for yourself, which can make going first against trap decks kind of difficult, and committing to lethal in the face of a possible torrential is hard as well. Two, Every single person is showing up with outs to Zeus. Your most effective playmaker being a known quantity means you're not getting the same bonuses that other rogue decks are. And three, you spend a lot of games winning off of Mystic Mine. I mean, I didn't show them, but frequently you just go to deck out. That never feels good. All in all, I'm shocked that I'm not seeing too much about this deck. It looks competent, consistent, and honestly kind of cracked. As always, thanks to my patrons, Chaotic Meatball, Hakuo, AJBYGO, Alex Perea, Andrew Eller, Author Sukiyomi, BB Poison, Blue Fan Fiction Inc., Brandon Field, Brandon Keys, Chibi Gohan, Colin Miller, Crispy, Dan the Man Hoban, Dominic Ernst, Dubs Rewatcher, Frosty, Going Down Swinging, Grant Curry, Indiana Petra, Jack Sack PhD, Night Mary, Major Rusty, Mike Carlotti, Not Witty, Redux, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Sarah Rutledge, Seeker, Sir Tachyon, Space Condor, Test Subject 213. Oh, God. 
Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Adventure Spence, Afro Ninja 123, Alfred Hendricks, Amaranta V, Anarcho Cameronism, Andrew Benson, Andrew Ferruia, Artemis, Fallen Stalin, Base Madoka, Benjamin Cole Kierman, Billy Williams, Blackacre, Blake Root, Bleb, Brandon Peterson, Breaker the Outrage, Captain Breadbeard, Cash Money Yuki, Chad Bortz, Caius, Chase Smith, Chorps Away, Christopher Nicado, Cypher Peon Perp6, CJ Alex, Cleveland, Cole Shulian, Colin Gustafson, Control for the Wind, Crazy Wizard, Crystal Red Fox, Daffy Deathclock, Dan Schwer, Danny Guadalupe, Darcy Tevs, Darla Keys, David Hernandez, Dive Missile, Dogma, Donut 235, Dr. Batman, Dr. Kilometer, Dying Eyes, Dylan Cujo, Distrin, Emily V, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Ethan Brown, Fisker Whiskers, Flying Fudge, FUTR, Gavin K, Griever, Hank Cheesecake, Haroof, How to Lose, Jose Mina, Hunter Smith, Hoob Meyer, I have nothing but contempt for this court, Incredibly Slow, Isaac Jackson, Jacob Pitt, Jay Minya, Jason Leonard, Jay Gordon, Jeff Leonard, Jell, Jesse Cox, Jonathan Wallace, Jose Luis Cortez, Julia Chulian, Callie, Kendall Fear, Kiffin Arshway, Corey Hess, Kurokaze, Lake Bayer, Lawrence, Leo Lisblitz, Light Knight, Lottie, Lucas Angles, Lucas Geardis, Lucas BRB, Lucas Arizzo Hansen, Majestic Cat 93, Major Duncan, Mark Sello, Matt Ajatica, Matthew Taylor, Max, MBT's Toes Will Not Suck Themselves, Merp, Mezzo Emerus, Michael Marks, Miles Edgelord, Mimes Are Creepy, Nick Extreme 99, Nice Torayo, I'm saying that one right. Uh, Nico, Ni Niru Soup, Nitro Skull, Nix Dolores, Noted Pop, Noom, Ocean McCool, Olympus, Omase, Austrian, Osmaniac, Partu, Hasho Bon the Otter, Hi Zur, Picnic Blasted, Pig, Pissy Won't Get Banned, Copium. I mean, probably not. Precise Bike 13, Pro FP2, Pro Hunter 69, Chrono, Ragna, Raska, Revolver Did Nothing Wrong, Rick Martin, Riley Malo, Ross Rumelhart, Ross Z. Yu-Gi-Oh, Soraya, Sam Pinney, Sapphic Ashley, Scrafted, Sean Deal, Sean Flynn, Second Sandoria, Seraphine, Shareable Carcass, Shy, Spencer Kennedy, Standards Objective, Steve McMullen, Swinkles, Tate Rosencutter, The Carl Moxley, The Saucy Pickle, This Machine 237, Thought Auditor, Time Lord Omega, Vecta 99, Violet Prison, Watson, Why Am I Here, Will Elliott, Yordalehi Who, Yuri's Best. I I don't know how to pronounce this one. I know the last one is Yukie, but I don't know what the one above it is. Sorry. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.